What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overlord here. So we're talking about Halloween ends in this video here today. David Gordon Green recently sat down with a few different outlets obviously to discuss Halloween ends and explain some of the narrative decisions with this movie. Uh, in my last video I know I talked about Corey's original fate and we're going to talk about that in more detail here just share my thoughts on that in more detail and I'll talk about this explanation that he gave David Gordon Green that being related to why they did this time jump now he did this with Collider I'm going to talk about the time jump first he revealed some reasoning behind the time jump in an interview with Collider recently he said I don't know that it changed in any radical form there were things that we evolved when we were writing kills and Lori was bedridden because she would be because she's been stabbed in the belly a few times I knew we needed to make a time jump or we decided after thinking about it there was a period of time where it was going to be all one linear continuous type of movie but then how are you going to get this climatic battle out of her so then we made decisions to evolve it and say okay there's a time jump between kills and ends and it became a great opportunity and discovery of the fact that we can meet an opti optimistic Lori Strode that has gone to therapy perhaps and she's decorating for Halloween. She's inviting this holiday. She's making pumpkin pies so we can see a Lori that's in many ways the opposite of the Lori that we met in 2018. And to me, that just becomes a discovery you get from workshopping the script with my beloved co-writers and talking to the actors. Turning a camera on things that work and work less and then trying to sculpt something you feel like is the most satisfying obviously kills is just kind of a chaotic art film middle chapter for me it's just a michael myers opera and then ends i just wanted to build to make sure i felt emotional i felt atmosphere i felt romance i wanted it to be a love song to the fans and i don't think anyone's gonna see it coming they certainly wouldn't expect us to make some of the choices we've made now i will comment on that first by saying i think again the problem with the time jump is that it probably would have worked better if halloween kills did not end a certain way had the character of judy had judy greer's character of karen strode karen nelson had not been killed in that fashion thus setting up a opportunity for Lori to fulfill a even more integral arc because her reasoning for what she was doing had been destroyed earlier in the movie when someone pointed out to her that this was never about her and Michael was never after her. You ended kills in a fashion that gave her a chance to say, hey, you know what? Michael's not after me, but I'm sure as hell going to be after him now. The fact that the movie ended like that is, I think, what the problem is for a lot of people when they watch the next movie. It's kind of like a, hey, who is this? guy moment i think the question mark around Corey probably could have been softened if kills had ended a different way kills kind of ends in a way that when you watch it it is going to trigger something in you that would anticipate no matter if you watch the extended cut or the theatrical cut it seems as though it's purposely setting up a final showdown that could be stemming from Lori finding out that Michael killed her daughter, which in one of the cuts she does, and she says she's going after Michael. So again, going off of the, the extended cut, a big question to me is, I would love to know what she did after she walked out of that room with the knife. Who stopped her? Who talked to her? What? It just leaves like this big void, I would say, in between kills to ends because of how kills ended had kills ended a separate way or a different way your reception to ends would have probably been more welcoming i again it can't admit there are some compelling things about the script for ends the dialogue that's being written is more digestible there are some writing improvements compared to kills it's just that this feels that it feels as though it's structured wrong in your trilogy because of narrative decisions that have already happened prior to it that's just my two cents on that uh i respect why he did the time jump because again i understand that yes obviously if she is bedridden and stabbed a few times obviously yes then how is she gonna fight him in a more believable battle in the same night i get all of that i still think you could have done that i would have i would have suspended my disbelief a little bit further plus i would have still been in favor of having allison a little bit more involved in the final battle anyway so that way Lori can take a back seat but maybe get the final killing blow but just to talk about Corey cunningham david gordon green also revealed to the rap that Corey cunningham was going to be alive in one version of the film there is a version where i guess he would have just got his feet wet as far as like teaming with michael i assume and he would have just dabbled in it and said you know i'm not gonna do this i'm gonna go back to my regular life now again i've already stated this if he had done that he cannot just simply go back to his regular life but if this were the case and he ended up surviving i think what this would have done is it would serve as some sort of representation as to 
how evil again is always changing shape because Corey started off as somebody who was harmless corrupted now once again is no longer harmless because he recognizes that this is not this is not who he is so that evil that people were trying to place onto him he decides hey that's not me i don't want that you guys want evil you can go find it elsewhere and he decides to drop this but of course again if he had killed somebody he would need to serve some jail time and i think the only real strong the strong narrative plot point that would have come out of that if he had survived would be that driving home the fact that evil takes many forms evil is always changing it's always taking a different shape at one point it seemed like it was taking shape in Corey cunningham then Corey decided to drop it who's it going to jump to next because they again were hyping it up as if there were some literal physical presence we also did have we also now have talked about the fact if you were non back this up there was apparently an ending where evil was indeed going to jump to one final person it would have jumped to Lori strode by the time halloween ends had concluded she was going to try to strangle allison you know that's something that i guess they probably shot because again there's an image that we don't see featured anywhere in the movie where Lori gets a knock on the door and it's Allison. It, I'm assuming going off those bandages on her face. It's after they killed Michael the day prior. So ultimately, Corey Cunningham, we know he died. If he had survived, I would have been fine with that. And I really just only think that his survival would have just further sent home the message that evil takes many forms. Evil is always evolving and it's just taking many shapes. His survival to me, I don't think would have been an issue. But again, Corey Cunningham as a character he isn't the problem i think it ultimately is well if you think he's a problem then that's just you i don't think the character in and of itself is a problem he's probably one of the most compelling characters we've had in this franchise it's the placement of the character the decision of when you the timing of when you want to introduce him some people i know would not i i'm i would not want to say i'm not in this boat if i were doing halloween ends i would not have introduced Corey cunningham Corey cunningham to me has so much potential that it feels kind of insulting as well that you introduced him in the last installment and he got the fate that he got i, I think it would have been more compelling again had he been introduced prior let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video in the description i will have links to all my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course to let me know if there are any movies news or reviews you would like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video